Hi, this is Chris Monk at Highline Guitars, and you're watching episode 42 of From the Luthier's Workbench. In this episode, I'm going to talk a little bit about my X-Carve CNC carving machine. Um, for those of you who've been watching my videos over the past couple of years, you've probably seen me using this machine from time to time while making my guitars. And it seems like every time I post either photos or video online of me using this machine, um, I get a lot of questions from people about specifically the X car. And uh, really the most common question that I get is, can this machine uh, build guitars? Is it up to the task? And the short answer to that question is absolutely. Uh, the long answer um, is a little bit more uh, complicated. Um, I think uh, a lot of people, when they see a machine like this, um, they think about the other YouTube videos they've seen where people are, uh, you know, big guitar companies are using CNC technology uh, to mass produce guitars. And this isn't that type of machine. Uh, this isn't really intended for large scale mass production. But again, that's something that depends on your definition of what mass production is. Um, as a one man small shop luthier, to me, mass production would be, you know, anything over, say, six guitars a month or seven guitars a month. Um, you know, when you start getting into that uh, 10 to 20 guitars a month, you're starting to look at something that might be considered more of a mass production type uh, situation. And if that's the case, you really have to look at um, a pretty robust CNC machine to do that kind of um, quantity. Uh, this, the the X-Card, however, is designed really more for the, uh, the, one sh uh, the small shop, one man, you know, hobbyist, small business type person. And uh, it's really geared towards doing one guitar at a time. Um, you know, you really can't put more than a couple bodies on here at a time. And even if you were to fit two bodies on here at once or, you know, two necks or three necks or whatever, it's still only going to be carving one at a time. Um, the, um, the other concern is, is capacity. And um, the X-Carve has about a two and a half inch capacity stock out of the box. And um, that allows you to carve just about any uh, guitar body, you know, solid body, electric guitar body, and most necks. However, if you're doing angled headstocks, you have to take into consideration how high that headstock is going to come off the table because you don't want the, uh, the gantry to bash into it. Um, now, these are the sort of things that can be... Um, you can change that by modifying the machine. You know, for example, I can increase the capacity by simply replacing these plates on the end with a taller plate. Uh, one of the beauties of the X-Carve is uh, you're not really locked into a specific um, set of parameters. You can modify a lot of it. And um, this is one of the older uh, 1,000 by 1,000 machines, and I know that the, the model that they are currently selling has a number of modifications that uh, were kind of, uh, they were pushed by um, users. Uh, for example, they've strengthened um, the x-axis considerably. Uh, I modified mine to strengthen it, but now it comes with a beefier slide. Um, and they also have a new controller, which is a little bit more robust. And I think it comes stock with the um, DeWalt um, DWP611 router, which has much more power than the original spindle that it came with. So, um, you know, like I said, if you're looking to do mass production and, you know, buy it by that, you know, we're talking 10 to 20 guitars a month or more. Um, you're going to definitely have to look at a much more um, robust machine. And when I say robust, this machine is plenty strong for doing guitar bodies and necks. But when you're talking about mass production, you have to run the machine at a much, much higher speed than you really can with this. Um, by comparison, when I run my X-Carve at higher speeds, feed rates, 
I really don't go beyond 150 inches per minute. Um, that's about the maximum I've run the machine at. Uh, I've never tested beyond that, uh, but I really don't need to because I'm not trying to uh, speed the process up necessarily. When you're talking mass production, you know, 10 to 20 guitars a month or more, um, you're really starting to look at having to, to run a machine at 600 to 1,000 inches per minute. And to do that, you're gonna need a much more robust machine. And unfortunately, you're also gonna end up having to spend, at the minimum, at least five grand. Um, a lot of those machines start pushing upwards of 10 grand. So, you know, when you start looking at, at those kind of expenses, versus I think these right now are, are for sale for like 1600 bucks on the Inventables website. And, um, you know, that's a much more affordable price for most people. And the situation like I'm in as a, you know, one man small shop luthier. Um, but if you uh, are willing to, um, you know, forego extreme speed, for affordability, this is a great way to go. And, you know, I've considered the possibility of one day building a much bigger, much more powerful, faster machine. And I may eventually one day do that. Um, but the, iron the ironic thing about that is if I decide to go that route, I'll probably use my X-Carve to make a lot of the components for that machine. So, um, you know, I have to say I've been really happy with this machine and in the year and a half that I've used it, um, I haven't really had any major issues. Um, I did uh, beef up the strength of the x-axis, I reinforced the y-axis, and I changed out a couple nuts and bolts in here and there. And like I said, I replaced the original spindle with the uh, DeWalt, uh, which is a much better uh, uh, router to use for carving guitar bodies. It has more power. And um, the only problems I've had running this machine, and, and I have to say I run the machine a couple times a week doing, uh, you know, guitar bodies and various other projects. And the only issue I had in the last year and a half was um, I did snap one of these drive belts, and that was only because I didn't realize you have to, you know, how carefully you have to set it up and make sure that it's adjusted properly. And um, I think I had one of the belts just a tad too tight and that caused it to snap. But these belts are, they're just uh, regular GT2 uh, drive belts and you can get them in large quantities for pretty cheap. So I bought enough to replace the belt and then have some left over in case you know, another belt should ever break, but um, I've just been running it like crazy and haven't had any issues with that. Another problem I had was, um, and this is the only other problem I had, when I built the machine, um, I used a, the Acme lead screw option, which I think is now standard, but the screw that came with it, uh, I noticed it kind of wobbled slightly. Um, and I was a little bit concerned about that, but I went ahead and uh, assembled the machine and started using it, and I didn't notice that it was causing any kind of a problem. But then the other day, as it was, um, as the z-axis was moving up and down, I noticed it was kind of clunky. Um, and I shut it down and I took a look at it, and sure enough, there was a tremendous amount of play where the um, x-axis runs through the um, Delrin nut. So, um, I contacted Inventables and I, I sent them some video to show what was going on and I said, do I need to replace the nut? Is this normal? Because I wasn't really sure. I thought, well, maybe that's just how it is. But um, they responded back by saying, no, it looks, looks to us like you need to replace the entire lead screw and the nut because it may be a faulty lead screw. And they sent me one free of charge. I didn't have to pay for it. And they overnighted it to me. And when I took the old uh, rod off, I rolled it across the counter and sure enough, it was just completely warped. I mean, not severely, but enough that it would cause problems over time. The new one, perfect. So I installed it, hooked everything back up in this um, um, Z-axis uh, movement has never been smoother. So, um, 
you know, if you're if you're considering one of these machines, but you're not entirely sure, you know, um, you know, because it's it's asking a lot, I think, to send, you know, fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars over the internet to somebody for a machine you've never actually seen before. I will say, their customer service is inspiring. Um, I'd like to see every company I deal with have the same level of customer service. And so if, you know, that's one of the things that uh, may be holding you back, um, don't worry about their customer service. They're going to back up their machine and, you know, they, they replace that lead screw. It's been almost two years since I got this machine, so they stand behind it and, and I'm really happy with that. So. Uh, but hopefully this is it. will answer some of your questions about this machine and what its capabilities are. Um, you know, and if you have more questions, uh, just post them down in the comments below and I'll, I'll try to get to them and answer them. So um, with that, I'm going to get back to work and start uh, carving up a, a guitar body with this machine. So take care. I uh, hope you get into the shop and get some work done. And we will see you in the next episode of From the Luthiers Workbench.